Hi everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures and today I'm sharing my collection of vintage and antique perfume bottles. I've collected them around the house. I'm sure I've missed a few, but this is a good sample of them. So first I thought I'd talk about the two in the front before I talk about the bottles on the mirror. So the two in the front do not have the same aesthetic quality as the other ones, but they have a lot of sentimental value. So my dad would take my sister and me to this food market and outside they would sell all different things, purses, sunglasses, incense, candles, jewelry, and these little vials of perfume. Now they were probably knockoffs and they would have these little tight signs, labels that would have clear tape holding them on. They only cost a few dollars and I just loved smelling them. I thought it was a treat. I love the fact that the little bottles were miniature because I loved anything miniature. So I still have that one. It actually smells pretty good and that definitely reminds me of my father. This one also reminds me of my father because he would have these interesting little glass samples of perfume. So I don't think that these were his. I think these were either a gift or I found them at an estate sale but they're very similar to what he had. And I did just notice that the top of this says Cody, and I recently learned something about Cody perfume bottles, that the original ones uh, were made in France because Cody was a French company, and um, they were made by Lalique, which is a very expensive glass company. So I um, looked on eBay to see you know, what they looked like, what they were going for, and they were very expensive. I feel like, though, if you were at a sale, yard sale, you could possibly find a bottle and people might not know what they had. So I would keep your eye out for that. So that one says Cody, and in it, it's just so interesting. It's three glass vials, and you would break the end, and then the sample of perfume would come out. So there's one that's broken. You can see it's empty. And then there's two that are unused. I'll start with the three bottles in the front. I'm pretty sure that I found two of these at a thrift store and the third I found on eBay and I purchased them because they have an R for my daughter's name. And Replique is the name of the perfume. And they have a nice simple base, but I love that the tops are a little bit different. And on the bottom of two of the bottles, they do say Raphael bottle made in France. I have two glass perfume bottles that are marked Czechoslovakia and I got the stopper and the bottle at one yard sale but on different days, actually different months. I purchased the stopper for a dollar and I had this for a while just in my craft bins. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And then months later, this woman had another sale. Well, it turns out that she does estate cleanouts, And if there's enough stuff at the estate, she will have a sale. And sometimes she just has the sale at her house. So she boxes the, the things up and brings them. So when I saw this bottom, I said, you know what? That looks a lot like the stopper I have at home. So she said, well, if you think that you have the stopper, then just take the bottom. So I was so excited to come home, found the stopper, and it was a perfect match. So obviously they just got separated in the moving of, um, of the boxes from the estate. So I had this sitting on um, a shelf in our guest bathroom for a while, and I was looking on eBay one day, and I saw bottles that looked very similar and that they were made in Czechoslovakia. So I said, oh, I wonder if this bottle is. And I had recalled looking at the bottom several times and not seeing any markings, just because I wanted to learn about it. And then I caught it in the right light. So you can see it doesn't really look like anything's there. And then right there, there's an oval and it says made in Czechoslovakia. Even if you run your fingernail over it, you cannot feel it. It's wild. And these are marked pretty high on eBay. I don't know if they still are, but they were when I was looking, 60 to $100. So I was really happy to have that for a dollar. A little chip in the ring, rim, but for a dollar, it doesn't bother me. And then I have this piece. I actually picked this up this summer. I was with Cindy from Mimi's Treasure Cottage at an estate sale. I had already been to the estate sale two other times, and this was the last weekend. It was fill a bag for $5. 
and I was still finding treasures. I think I filled two bags, crammed them full. So this probably cost me a quarter, considering how much I had in the bag. And uh, I picked it up and I said, oh, I wonder if this one says Czechoslovakia as well. And it's the same thing. At first you don't see it, but then there it is right in the middle. So that estate is over and done. They've sold the house. Someone else has bought it. So pretty much no chance that I'm going to be able to find the stopper that matches it. But I might find a stopper down the road. I found this trophy perfume bottle and the glass orange perfume bottle at the same estate sale. I was able to get some wonderfully old and beautiful pieces for only $8. It was such a good deal. And these are some of my favorite treasures that I found in the past two years are these two perfume bottles. And I love to just keep them together as well because they remember or they remind me of when I found them. So the orange is glass and it's painted on the outside and it is chipping. And I think that's what makes me love it even more. It's this faded glamour. And I have seen some of these on eBay. They all have different towns on them. So something that was like kind of mass produced and then you could tailor it to whatever town wanted to sell the souvenir. It probably had a leaf or a stem or something. And on the inside, it's just so unique. It's got three samples of the same orange blossom perfume. And I love the scent of orange blossom. I actually have um, one by... Um, Joe Malone. That's wonderful. And if you just want to be in a good mood, it just brightens your day. And then it has this little metal that keeps it in there. And this is a perfume bottle in the shape of a trophy. And it has the little um, strings on it. It's called the Winna Perfume. And it's made uh, Distributors Art Field Creations New York. An art field creation. So it's, I mean, it's got everything still on it. So last night I took off the bottom because I was curious as to what was in there and the perfume bottle ends right about there and then it's just empty. I love the way that that looks. And because I love the orange motif and orange blossom perfume, I picked this up from um, the old curiosity shop and it's just a wooden ball. It has a glass bottle in it and it has these uh, metallic green leaves made in Florida, genuine orange blossom perfume. A lot of people commented they got these as a souvenir in the 70s. And that's what they remind me of going to south of the border and getting little souvenirs. This miniature bottle is one of the very few that I have left from a lot that I purchased at a flea market. They had lots of these miniature bottles. Uh, I wanna say they were about 50 cents a piece. And then I asked the woman um, how much she would take for all of them. She said $5. Uh, I don't know if this was with that lot or not. This might've been something that again, was in some friend mail or I picked up somewhere else, but it's just indicative of these 20 little miniature bottles. They were so much fun to go through. I gave some to my nieces and used them in my art. And I would love to come across a lot like that again. In the back, I have this bottle that Sally sent me. And it was, it's just got the red top. And what's awesome is the label that has the bell. So I like to put it out at Christmas. I filled it with vintage glitter. And then I have this shabby little velvet ribbon that I add to it. Sometimes I put a little holly or some bells on there. This middle piece is a bottle that I found at an antique store and I really loved the dress form shape to it. And the brand is, and I want to say it right, um, Scaparelli. So I never pronounce it like that. I always did. I always said um, Schiparelli or Schaparelli, but I just looked it up on YouTube and I want to say they were saying it's Scaparelli. And uh, it's been a couture fashion house for 100 years. Um, they were saying that it was one of the first to combine fashion and art. So they have a lot of avant-garde uh, haute couture pieces. And from watching this quick little video on um, their YouTube channel, 
they have a new creative director from Texas who has moved to France. And over the past two years, I think he's really reinvented the brand. And a few years ago, they had um, a show at the Philadelphia Museum of Art that my friend and I went to see um, with the Scaparelli designs. I don't want to rush the rest of the video, so I'm definitely going to make this a two-part video. Please come back to see part two, and thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.